live from Stanford University in Palo Alto, California, it's theCUBE, covering Women in Data Science Conference 2018, brought to you by Stanford. Back to theCUBE, our continuing coverage of Women in Data Science 2018 continues. I'm Lisa Martin, live from Stanford University. We have had a great array of guests this morning um, from speakers, panelists, um, as well as attendees. This is an incredible one day technical event and we're very excited to be joined by one of the panelists on the career panel this afternoon, Dr. Jennifer Prenke, the head of data science at Atlassian. Welcome to theCUBE. Hi, it's my pleasure to be here. It's exciting to have you here. So you lead search, all search and machine learning initiatives at Atlassian, but you were telling me something that's interesting about your team. Tell us about that. Yeah, no, so the interesting thing about my team is even though I'm the head of data science, my team is not 100% data scientists. So the belief of the company is that we really wanted to be in charge of our own destiny and be able to uh, deploy our models ourselves and not be depending on other, uh, other people to make uh, deployment faster. Was that one of the interesting kind of cultural elements that attracted you last year to Atlassian? No, so what, what is really interesting about Atlassian is, you know, like they, I mean, it's definitely a company that create products that I would say virtually every single software company in the world is using. Yep. And, uh, you know, like uh, they have a very strong uh, software engineering culture. And so uh, last year they decided to embrace, you know, data science. And so uh, I thought it was a very interesting challenge for me to try and uh, a little, infuse a little bit of the, you know, like my passion for data and data driven as to the company. So you um, had quite a, a fast ramp at Atlassian. You joined last summer and in uh, six, less than six months, you grew your team of data scientists and engineers from three people to 15, yeah. and it gets better, in less than six months across three locations, yeah. Mountain View, San Francisco, and Sydney. How, right. What were some of the key things for you that led you to make that impact so quickly? I think, you know, like, uh, I mean, I, I think, most data scientists on the world like are interested in making an impact and this is a company that uh, obviously does a lot of impact and a lot of people talk about this company and uh, you know like uh, uh, there is obviously a lot of interesting data and so I think one of the amazing thing is that we have a very important role to play right because we are in a position where we have data related to the way people work with each other collaborate with, with each other and this is a very unique data set so it's it's usually really easy to attract people to Atlassian. So. Yeah. <laughs> you mentioned collaboration, and that's certainly an undertone here at WIDS. I mentioned in its third year, you were here last year as an attendee, now you're here this year as a speaker. They've grown this event dramatically in a couple of years alone. Yeah. The opportunity to reach, you know, they're expecting 100,000 to engage. It's 177 regional events. Marco Gerritsen gave us that number about an hour ago in 53 countries. What is it about WIDS that attracted you, not only back this year, but to, to welcome the opportunity to be on this career panel. I actually tell you something. So, uh, you know, like we talk about diversity and I think people usually think of diversity as, uh, you know, like meeting some kind of ratio, some bar, right? I mean, to have like uh, equality between male and female or uh, specific minorities. I think people tend to forget that uh, the real diversity is diversity of thought. And so I actually found out that the very first data science job I actually got, I was actually the only person who had uh, a background in uh, applied math. And everybody else was coming from a back background in uh, computer science. And I quickly realized that, you know, like I'm the only person who's really like trying to push for, let's validate our models really uh, properly, et cetera. And so uh, that made me realize how important that, they, that that is to have like, a, you know, like a, a lot of diversity. And so I think WITS is definitely a place where you see lots of women interested in the same thing, but coming from different uh, perspectives, different horizons at different levels of their career. And this is really something really unique in the industry. Diversity of thought, I love that. I've not heard that before. I'm going to use that, but I'll, I'll give you credit for it. But that is one of the things that is so, the more people we speak to, not just at WIDS, but at events like this on the Cube, is you hear there's still such a need. Obviously, the scale at which the WIDS has grown shows clear demand for, we need more awareness that this diversity is missing. Yeah. But in, in the fact that Data science is so, it's almost horizontal, if you will, across every industry, and it, and it sort of is blurring the boundaries between rigid job roles, doctor, lawyer, attorney, teacher, whatever. Exactly. This is really quite pervasive, and it provides the opportunity for 
um, data scientists globally to be able to make massive impact. Yeah. But also it's still, as Margot Garrison was sharing earlier, it still requires what you said is that diversity in thought because having a particular you know, small set of um, perspectives evaluating data, you think about it from a, a, an enterprise perspective, the you know, ty types of companies that Atlassian deals with, right. and they are looking to grow and expand and, and you know, launch new business models, yeah. but if the di thought diversity is narrow, right. there's probably a lot of opportunity that is never going to be discovered. Right, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, one of the things also I found interesting in your background was that you found yourself sort of at this, um, interesting juxtaposition of being a mentor and going, wait a minute, this, this now gives you a great opportunity, but it also comes with some overhead, right? You, you've got it from a management perspective. Yeah. What is that sort of crossroads that you found yourself um, reaching and, and how, what have you done with that? Uh, so I, I think you know, like uh, uh, it's it's true of probably every single technical role, but maybe data science more than others. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, you you have to be technical to be part of the story, right? I mean, so I think people need to have uh, a leader that they can relate to, and I think it's very important that you're still part of this. And it's uh, particularly interesting for data science because data science is a field that moves so quickly, right? I mean, so uh, usually you have people moving on to you know, like data science manager positions after being an IC and so uh, if you don't make a conscious effort to remain that you know, like technical point of contact person that uh, people trust and people go to uh, then you know like uh, you know like uh, when I think back of the technologies that uh, were you know like trendy when I was still an IC compared to now like it's really important for uh, for the managers to be still aware of that in order to do a good job as a mentor and as a leader. You also said something, I think, before we went live, that is an important element for, for the women that WIDS is aiming to inspire and educate today, those that are new into the field or, or thinking about it, as well as those who've been in it for a while. But it's, there is not just getting there and going, yes, I'm interested, this is my passion, I want to have a career in this. Right. It's also having to learn how to be a female leader. And right. as you mentioned, from right. a management perspective, right. Right. you got to learn, you, you have to know how to right. be right. Assertive. Right. Tell us a little yeah. bit about some of the that's trails and tribulations that yeah. you have encountered in no, that respect. No, that's that's a very interesting question because um, I'm actually very happy to see that nowadays I think it's becoming uh, easier and, and easier for women to step into like a uh, individual contributor positions because I think that uh, people realize now that a woman can do just as good as a, a job as as a man for a defined position, but when you're actually in a you know, like leadership position, you have to step into like a, a thought leadership role, right? And so basically you sometimes have to be uh, in a meeting where you only have other male engineers or male data scientists over there and say like, a, you know what, uh, I disagree with you, right? And so this as a woman becomes a little bit challenging right? because uh, following like the processes that are already in place, I believe that people have realized that it's okay for a woman to do that, but then being the assertive person that goes against the flow and says, you are not thinking about it the right way, uh, might some, sometimes be a problem because women are not being perceived as you know, like creatures that are naturally assertive, right? And so it, it's typical for people, uh, you know, like a, a head of data science, female uh, head data scientist, to be in a situation where they're perceived as being a, maybe a little bit aggressive or a little bit pushy. And you know, like you sometimes fall into this, uh, you're know, like old saying, like uh, he's the boss, she's bossy kind of thing. And that, I had that someone is a challenge. once tell me a couple years ago, and I'm in in tech as well, that I was pushy, and it was I I, I think this was a language barrier thing. I think he meant to say persistent. Yeah. <laughs> but um, on that front, tell me a little bit more about your team of data scientists and engineers and the females on your team. Right. How do you help coach them to embrace? It's okay to speak your mind. Yeah. How do you, what's, yeah. what's that like been like for you? So I would say like I was actually pretty soft spoken myself and so at some point I realized that public speaking actually helped me got there. So I mean uh, uh, somebody at some point like uh, told me like you should go and you know, like, uh, you're like you're brilliant technically like go speak at a conference and then I realized like, you know, like people are listening to me actually like uh, you know like uh, you always have a, a little bit of a you know like a imposter syndrome kind of problem as a woman so it helped me overcome this and so now I'm kind of trying to stimulate the ladies on my group to do the same thing because that has worked really well for me I think. Uh, you 
you have to get outside your comfort zone and try to, you know, like things that help you have the self-confidence in order to you, for you to get to the level of assertiveness, you need to become successful. Exactly. I, I, we've had a number of women on the show today alone talk about getting outside of your comfort zone and one of my mentors always says, get comfortably uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And that's not an easy thing to achieve, but I, I think you walk in the door at WIDS and you instantly feel inspired yeah. and um, empowered and uh, I think a number of the women that we've had on yeah. today already have talked about having sort of being charged as a mentor with the responsibility, like you just said, of, of helping those that are following your footsteps maybe understand yeah. how to have that confidence yeah. and then have that kind of that right balance. So yeah. there's, you know, there's professionals in there, there's respect, but it's not just about getting them into the field, it's yeah. about teaching them how to, once you're there, yeah. how to navigate a career yeah. path yeah. that is um, successful. But that's, that's an interesting thought because I actually believe that, uh, you know, like, uh, getting comfortable with the uncomfortable is definitely something that data science is about, right? Because you have new technologies, you have new models, you have like a lateral moves, like I actually was in uh, the advertising industry as a data scientist before switching to e-commerce and then eventually to the software industry. So, uh, you know, like I think that people who are trained to be data scientists are you know, like, like that and so they should also be comfortable to with the uncomfortable in their daily lives. Yeah, so you're mentioning before we went on that some of the people that you work with are like, it's my my hope and dream to be at WIDS next year. What are some of the things that you've heard it as, as we're at the halfway mark of WIDS today that you're going to go back and share with your team as well as maybe your friends, other females that are working in STEM fields as well? I would say, you know, like last year I was here like just listening to other people or whatever. This this year I'm on the uh, on the on the panel, so I mean I'm just like, you know, like nothing is impossible. I think like uh, I mean we've proven that over and over again in data science, right? I mean who would have thought that ten years ago like we would be at that level of uh, understanding of artificial intelligence and the entire field, right? I mean so it's just uh, uh, yeah, I mean it's all about like waiting and see what the future has to bring to you. And uh, we have all these amazing women today actually show us that it's possible to get there and it's exciting to be. It is, it's possible and it's exciting. Well, Jennifer, thanks so much for carving out some of your time today to speak with us. We wish you continued success at Atlassian and we look forward to seeing you back at WIDS next year. Thank you. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. We're live at Stanford University at the third annual Women in Data Science Conference. Hashtag WIDS 2018, join the conversation. I'll be right back with my next guest after a short break.